Tracy Sable tonight on EWTN News Nightly border battle. Officials prepare for a surge of migrants at the U.S. southern border. We're on Capitol Hill. Numbers of concern. Analysis of a new poll that could worry the White House. Defending human rights. What the United Nations is saying about the Taliban's rule in Afghanistan. And looking to heaven. Pope Francis reminds the faithful of one way to overcome anxiety. These stories and more tonight. From EWTN, the Global Catholic Network, this is EWTN News Nightly. Thank you for being with us. Our top story tonight, thousands of migrants continue to gather along the southern border as Title 42 is set to end this Thursday. The COVID health directive allowed border agents to easily turn away migrants seeking asylum. Republicans say the surge will overwhelm law enforcement. The Biden administration says it's ready. Capitol Hill correspondent Eric Rosales joins us now with the latest. Eric. Well, good evening, Tracy. You know, according to Border Patrol zone numbers, migrants are coming from more than 140 countries. Now, the Biden administration has singled out one group, creating a pathway to allow qualified Venezuelans into the country, some 26,000 who are fleeing persecution. Meanwhile, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas claims that law enforcement can handle the surge, but even he admits that we could see up to 10,000 or more migrants at the border each day. We've been preparing for quite some time and we are ready. What we are expecting is indeed a, a surge. Um, and what we are doing is planning for different levels of a surge. But several Texas border cities aren't so sure they've declared state of emergencies. Now local leaders say the influx of refugees presents big challenges. If we are prepared. I don't think we're going to be prepared enough. My biggest concern right now is shelter capacity. Uh, we just need to have significant uh, bed space, probably between 1,500 and 2,000. And currently we're working with about 500, just to put that into perspective. The Biden administration is sending 1,500 troops to help with processing, but not with enforcement. Well, if the border's secure, why is President Biden sending 1,500 active duty military down to the border? When they can't enforce immigration law, all they can do is change diapers and push paper. This week, the U.S. House will vote on a bill to secure the border. But the chairman of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Committee on Migration, Bishop Mark Seitz of El Paso, wrote lawmakers urging them to oppose it, stating the bill, quote, would endanger unaccompanied children and inflict harm on other vulnerable persons, mandate damaging detention and removal practices, and potentially eliminate federal partnerships with faith-based and non-governmental organizations. Republican Senator Rick Scott visited Del Rio, Texas this weekend. He said in a Twitter video that a surge in crossings will make the U.S. less safe. When Title 42 ends, it's going to get a lot worse. That means more fentanyl, more criminals, more terrorists are going to come into our great country. That shouldn't be happening. Senator John Cornyn is part of a bipartisan group that has introduced a bill giving the Biden administration a two-year temporary expulsion authority, similar to Title 42, but it's unlikely that bill will ever make it to the Senate floor. At the Capitol, Eric Rosales, EWTN News Nightly. Our President Joe Biden would veto that House GOP bill that we heard about in Eric's report, the Secure the Border Act, that is set to be voted on Thursday. That is the same day COVID-19 restrictions end, and it stands little chance of passing the Democratic-held Senate. White House correspondent Owen Jensen reports. Tracy, the Biden administration says the House bill would make things worse, not better, adding it does very little to actually increase border security while doing a great deal to trample on the nation's core values. The Biden administration has long argued Congress needs to act on the border in order to fix major problems that have led to record numbers of people illegally crossing. But as for the proposed Secure the Border Act, the administration writes, a successful border management strategy must include robust enforcement at the border of illegal crossings, deterrence to discourage illegal immigration, and legal pathways to ensure that those in need of protection are not turned away to face death or serious harm. Adding, H.R. 2 does nothing to address the root causes of migration, reduces humanitarian protections, and restricts lawful pathways, which are critical alternatives to unlawful entry. 
The Republican National Committee tweeting, the Biden administration doesn't want you to believe your eyes and ears on the border crisis. When they say the border is closed and secure, they are lying. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden delivers remarks today focused on air travelers. The airline industry is a key part of our economy. The Biden administration is working on new regulations that would require airlines to compensate passengers and cover their meals and hotel rooms if they are stranded for reasons within the airline's control. Now, nine major airlines cover hotels, 10 cover meals, 10 rebook for free. That's a real savings for middle class and working class families. And the White House just one day away now from meeting with top congressional leaders to discuss the debt limit, currently $31.4 trillion that was reached in January. Tax receipts have come in lower than projected. Republicans in Congress have refused to vote to raise the debt limit unless President Biden and congressional Democrats agree to deep spending cuts. President Biden also released a statement yesterday on that deadly shooting at a Dallas, Texas area mall over the weekend that claimed eight lives and critically injured others, saying he and the first lady are praying for the families, adding that there have been roughly 200 mass shootings in 2023. At the White House, Owen Jensen, EWTN News Nightly. A new poll finds more than six in 10 Americans believe President Joe Biden does not have the mental sharpness nor the physical health to serve effectively as president. According to a study released yesterday by ABC News and The Washington Post, only 32 percent of Americans say President Biden has the mental sharpness to be effective in the White House. What's more, his approval rating is now at an all time low at just 36 percent, down six points from February. And we go now to Julie Gunlock, director of the Center for Progress and Innovation at the Independent Women's Forum. Julie, great to see you again. Uh, a lot to get great to, man. but first let's unpack this poll. In addition to those numbers I just mentioned, uh, he also gets low marks among voters 30 and younger. Just 26 percent say they approve of his job performance. So what do you think this all signals? Well, it is a devastating poll. It is certainly the type of poll that should send any current administration or campaign into a panic. I'm not sure that's how they're uh, really handling it. Um, the, the bottom line is the Democrats don't have a deep bench. They don't have a lot of people that they could turn to. And Biden has already announced first to Al Roker and then officially with that very dark video where he you know, showed all this doom and gloom and said, you know, do you want it to go back to those days as if Americans aren't already suffering? And I think this poll shows that the, the most devastating part is Democrats. Democrats do not want him as the nominee. And yet, Democrats are now really stuck. Now, it was really interesting, a former advisor uh, to President Biden, Simone Sanders, this weekend on the on the weekend news shows said the DNC will not entertain any other candidates. They will not host debates. And she said there will be no debate. But it was interesting, Donna Brazil, another veteran camp Democratic campaign manager, um, she said she lost sleep over this. She's really worried. She said the Democrats have to wake up and they have to deliver a message to to Americans that say things will change. Democrats don't have that message and doesn't look like they're going to have that message under Biden. I really think the Democrats are stuck. And I think these polls really send a clear message to the Biden administration, to Biden himself. You got to step aside. Yeah. On another note, uh, as we heard from Eric, Title 42, as you know, is set to expire this Thursday. There are a lot of concerns, uh, including the expected huge surge of migrants. In fact, the Biden administration is sending 1,500 troops to the border uh, in anticipation. Julie, your thoughts and what concerns you? Uh, what concerns me is that the Biden administration is not calling this what it is. It's a human rights crisis. What's even more disturbing is that those troops, those 1,500 troops that are going down to the border are not going down there to get control of the border, to reestablish a border. There's not even a border at this point. They're going down there to process these people, to process them, process them into the country, to do paperwork, essentially. That is so devastating to the people who live on the southern border, those towns and communities and ranches that are on the southern border, they are, are being left to deal with this. And as your segment earlier said, they simply do not have the services to handle this influx, thousands of people. What's also so sad is we know now, we have the reports that the Biden administration has lost track of thousands of children that have come over to the United States unaccompanied. 
what in the world, why in the world are we letting thousands more in when we can't even track the ones who have been left in? And, and, and again, most, many of those were children who now are in the United States. We don't know where they are. And we're going to get thousands more because of the dropping of, t of 42. Julie, we have probably about a minute so left, but I quickly want to get to this. Um, a Catholic church in New York City raised a lot of eyebrows recently for its new art exhibit. The display at the Church of St. Paul the Apostle was titled, titled God is a Trans a queer Ugh. spiritual journey. Uh, this parish is considered ultra liberal and even has an LGBTQ plus ministry called Out at St. Paul. That said, even some parishioners feel this art display is really a bridge too far. Um, your thoughts on this and what's going on here? Yeah, a bridge too far is a really nice way of saying it. It is demonic. You are, uh, your gender is determined at birth. Um, this is is really a sickening display and it's horrible to see it in a Catholic church. I really hope the New York Diocese speaks up on this. Um, this is very important. This is a terrible trend that in cult uh, that is happening in the United States and we have to have strong leadership pushing back against this. We're gonna leave it right there. Julie, always great to get your insights. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Well, as previously mentioned, investigators are searching for a motive after a man killed eight people and wounded seven others in a shopping mall in Texas over the weekend. The shooting took place in a suburb of Dallas. The 33-year-old assailant was killed by a police officer who happened to be near the mall when the attack began. The head of the Archdiocese of Dallas is asking for prayers for the victims and their families. Bishop Edward Burns also calls on the faithful to stand up to the forces of evil. Also in Texas, eight people are dead after an SUV plowed through a crowd waiting for the bus outside of a migrant shelter. The driver ran a red light before crashing into the victims. He remains in the hospital. Officials say that they are still searching for a motive. And we have a lot more still to come here on EWTN News Nightly, including defending human dignity. Why the United Nations is expressing concern over the Taliban rule in Afghanistan and fit for a king. The celebrations continue following the coronation of King Charles III. All 27 people are dead after a fire in a gold mine broke out over the weekend in Peru. The mining company says 175 other workers were safely evacuated. Government officials say the cause is under investigation. Preliminary reports suggest the explosion was caused by a short circuit around 330 feet below the surface. All the warring sides in Sudan held peace talks over the weekend. However, today more signs of violence. Smoke could be seen rising above the capital city of Khartoum Monday. Over the weekend, the first negotiations were held between the country's military and its paramilitary opponents. The talks are part of a diplomatic initiative proposed by Saudi Arabia and the United States. A new report from the United Nations says Afghanistan's Taliban rulers are carrying out public executions, stonings, and other types of punishment. The UN calls for the practices to end, saying they violate human rights. Taliban officials say the penalties are in line with Islamic law and have overwhelming support among the Afghan people. Meantime, a Christian nonprofit group says the Taliban has issued death threats to more than 600 families in Afghanistan simply for being Christian. We go now to John Harama, the CEO of the Christian nonprofit Big Life. John, great to be with you. Um, first off, let's talk more about this. What stood out the most to you about this UN report? And also, could you give us a snapshot of the daily life for Christians in Afghanistan? Sure thing, Tracy. Uh, first of all, I think the report doesn't go into depth really what's really happening in Afghanistan. We are aware even over the last several weeks, uh, we've lost 14 people who have been martyred uh, for being believers, as well as about 33 people that are part of the underground network of churches there. In addition to that, we know about another over 70 more that uh, have perished because of their faith. So. I think the uh, the persecution against believers is much higher than the UN is, you know, reporting about floggings for different reasons. They they had different reasons for those uh, sentences that they carried out, but for for Christianity, it seems to be a, a much bigger impact and much bigger uh, penalty. Obviously, 
I think daily life in Afghanistan, you know, I mean, these people are scared. They're on the run. They are underground. Um, you know, Taliban is going door to door looking for anything that would uh, link somebody to Christianity, whether that's a Bible in their home or or a cross or anything would give them reason to uh, sentence somebody to death and kill them. Mm -hmm. So it's just, uh, you know, chaos leads to opportunity. We're hoping and, and continuing to praying that, uh, as we've seen in the past, that this is a crisis that leads to opportunity uh, moving forward. Yeah, it's so hard to believe, and we can't understand that over here. Um, terrifying. Tell us more about these 600 families and how your group is trying to help them. Yeah, they're in dire need. The um, the officials came in uh, several weeks ago and started questioning the men, and those are the ones that had been killed. In the past, they have spared the women and children, but unfortunately now they seem to be attacking them as well. So the only help that, uh, you know, is the advantage right now is getting them out of the country. And, you know, the prices have been gouged to a way that that's becoming very, very difficult. We were able to move over 50,000 people, you know, in the last year and a half uh, for about a total of $5 million. Now for these for these families right here, which is, you know, a little bit over 8,000 people, it's almost the same price, four and a half million dollars, just to get them out of the country because the way the prices have been gouged. So, you know, the idea is to get them out of the country, help them get to a point where they can be self-sustaining, make sure they have the proper paperwork so they can get jobs in their new areas and um, and move on from there. But it's a it's a desperate situation right now. Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, I know there's other work that you do in Afghanistan as well. Um, can you talk to us about all that? Yeah, I mean, we you know we actually serve in 147 countries, and so we see you know, a lot of the areas in, in the Middle East and South Asia that are, um, you know, in, in horrific situations right now due to the governments or through extremists. So uh, we are seeing unbelievable fruit uh, through these opportunities. And uh, as we said earlier, the, the chaos leads to opportunity and people desperately need help. And when they are helped, they start asking those questions, why did you help us? Once they get to that comfort level and it gives an opportunity to bring truth into their lives. John, we probably have maybe a minute left or so, uh, but quickly, before I let you go, what else do you feel the audience really needs to know about what's happening in Afghanistan, the persecution, persecution that is, of Christians, and how can we help out? Yeah, you know, the latest total is that there's probably over a million underground believers in Afghanistan right now. And most of them are okay. Most of them are secure, but for whatever reason, these uh, 8,000 believers are being targeted uh, intensely, so we need to get them out. So. The, the the biggest need is humanitarian, you know, as far as uh, food, water, medical, uh, clinic, shelter, but then ultimately the truth and, um, you know, through the scriptures and through God's word, um, the, you know, obviously the, the biggest need is prayer. But in addition to that, you know, it's cost, it costs about $500 per person to get them out of the country right now and set up in a new area where they could start thriving as an individual and thriving as uh, believers. Wonderful. Well, John, thank you so much for coming on today and all that you do. We really appreciate it. God bless you. I appreciate it. And, you know, if anybody wants more information, they can go to Big.Life. That's our webpage. And uh, there's a banner right across the top that's all about Afghanistan. And they can certainly get more information there. But well, I appreciate you uh, opening the eyes and, uh, and, and bringing this to the public. Absolutely. We appreciate you. And give us that website one more time. It's actually big.life, L-I-F-E, and that's that's all it is. It's uh, You don't need a .com or a .net or anything. It's big.life. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Sean. And again, thank you for all that you do. We appreciate it. God bless. Thank you. Up next on EWTN News Nightly, focused on heaven, Pope Francis reminds the faithful what's truly important in times of anxiety and Here's the kicker. A popular football star shares his secret to a pur purpose-filled life. Our preparations continue for the first session of the Synod on Synodality in October in Rome. The Synod Secretary General says prayer remains an important part of the process. The synodal process is mainly spiritual. The Holy Father is inviting the whole church to make more space for the Holy Spirit. Because if the Holy Spirit 
is missing. We have no synod and no church. When asked how the faithful could participate in the October Synod, Cardinal Grech said he is thankful for the support that he has received from our EWTN viewers and asks us to pray to our Blessed Mother. Now that we are in the month dedicated to Mary, I can make an appeal. Please convoke the intercession of Mary you know, to help the Church to have an open heart for the Holy Spirit. The Synod on Synodality has been divided into two sessions. The first will take place in October. The other will take place in October 2024. Both will be held in Rome. Cardinal Grech says the Holy Father hopes to have a, quote, more relaxed period of discernment. Pope Francis reminds the faithful that we are called by Christ to remain focused on heaven. Dove andare? E allo stesso tempo ci dice come andarci. In his Sunday address at the Vatican, the Holy Father says Jesus is our guide for reaching eternal life, and it is the promise of heaven that can help us overcome fatigue, confusion, and even failure here on earth. Well, today is a holiday in the United Kingdom following Saturday's coronation of King Charles III. Newspapers mark the historic day where thousands of people line the streets. In the UK alone, around 15 million people watched the ceremony on the BBC. There was history during the service as well. For the first time in nearly 500 years, a Catholic prelate had an official role in a coronation. Cardinal Vincent Nichols, head of the Archdiocese of Westminster was among those who gave a blessing to the newly crowned King Charles. Catholic leaders from across the UK were also present, as was Cardinal Pietro Perlin, Vatican Secretary of State, representing Pope Francis. A finally tonight, a Catholic and two-time Super Bowl champion was asked to deliver a commencement address at his alma mater over the weekend. And parents everywhere may have gotten a kick out of his remarks. Harrison Butker of the Kansas City Chiefs stole the ground at Georgia Tech that his best advice for happiness is to start a family. He adds that children can save our suffering culture. The NFL star ended the speech saying, quote, with or without the spotlight, your life has value and you are meant for more. And we thank you for watching tonight. Remember, you can follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at EWTN News Nightly. I'm Tracy Sable. Good night and God bless.